Um, with Asses and Arbitrage. Um, we want to apologize for not having the show last week, Wednesday. Um, I was under the weather. I think I had like the flu or something and I'm still trying to get over it. So thank you guys for your patience. Simon has been putting together a great show for you guys today. Um, we want to talk a little bit about Bitcoin Jungle in Costa Rica. And um, so I'm just going to give you some updates on the progress that they've been making. Yeah, yes, indeed. So, you know, we always like to talk about different places, um, different opportunities for us to go where you can have that arbitrage. So we've been looking into Costa Rica and their Bitcoin jungle, um, which is kind of similar to the uh, Bitcoin beach that you have in El Salvador. So I'm just going to read you a couple of things about that, and then we can um, go in and just kind of, you know, chop it up like we usually do. So first thing we want to know is uh, Bitcoin Jungle <clears throat> is a place. It's a place that is in uh, the, Pacific, the Pacific coast of Costa Rica, but it's also an app. So they have an app called Bitcoin Jungle, and which is helping develop a Bitcoin ecosystem in Costa Rica. Um, similar to the uh, the apps that they have in El Salvador, I believe is the <clears throat> one of them is Strike, and uh, I can't remember the other one, but it it, it doesn't matter. Okay. So let's talk about the uh, Bitcoin Jungle app. So it's a Bitcoin Lightning custodial wallet. So this custodial wallet uses the same model as Bitcoin Beach and built using the uh, Galloway Banking as a service framework. Okay, so what you'll have over there at Bitcoin Jungle, you'll have state-of-the-art Bitcoin ATMs that will allow you two-way exchange between Bitcoin to Colones and Colones to Bitcoin. So Colones mm -hmm. is the, uh, <laughs> that is the fiat currency they use in uh, Costa Rica. And uh, they're going to start in a place called Dominical um, that we're very familiar with. We'll get into that. And, and Uvita. And so uh, that is that's that's important. You know, you have those uh, Bitcoin ATMs in El Salvador. You have uh, what they call merchant solutions. So they'll um, you know they'll just focus on providing well-proven, battle-tested merchant solutions for uh, the Bitcoin pay server. And one of the things I like is they're going to do uh, education and community outreach. So they're going to organize, educate the community outreach events, starting with many local uh, ferias in the area, create partnerships with various local community organizations to educate and empower people to use these tools. So what would you say about that? Well, for one, we lived in Dominical, and um, Dominical is rural. I don't know why we always end up in the rural parts of the country. <laughs> Yeah, but, it's arbitrage. It's arbitrage. <laughs> well, yeah, besides that, but we might need to do some, some city some more. Anyway, um, we know that in these countries, they are so far behind even the most basic technological advancements. Mm -hmm. So this is big, especially if they're going to do the educational outreach that needs to be done in order to bring them into 2022. Mm -hmm. Um it's also, I think, um, a signal for Americans is that these smaller countries, I'm going to call them emerging markets. I'm not sure if, if, if it is an emerging market or not. Somebody would have to check me on that. But I'm going to call it an emerging market just to make my point. These emerging markets are pandering to American wealth. This is an opportunity for people to use their status and get treated better somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that would be one of the huge incentives to kind of travel to um, Bitcoin Beach and to um, take advantage of some of the opportunities they have there. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to retire there or relocate fully, but travel there, spend some time there and see what opportunities are available to you as a wealthy American. Mm -hmm. um, and to these countries, everybody's wealthy. Right. And you could be struggling in Detroit. Do you wealthy in these other countries? This is true. So to see if there is some type of opportunity there for you. Mm -hmm. So what they call it, uh, they say we're in, in Costa Rica, the Bitcoin jungle. So it's called the Golden Triangle in an area of the southwestern Costa Rica with a, a special life for energy. So it, it, we've been there. Um, it, it's like on the Pacific coast. 
Uh, so it's a place called Dominical. It's what we call, a, they, they call it a small surfing town. And I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Uh, it's a beach. Now, it is not a um, kind of like a calm beach. No, it's like a beach where professional surfers come. So the, the tides are very rough. It's not a place where you would send your children out to wade in the water and stuff. It is a, it's a different type of beach, but it's very nice. It's, 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 it's different. Yeah, it's a different type of beach uh, that people you, that are people usually looking for like a laid back beach. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's on the Pacific coast. Um, that what I've read here is. Um, you know, one of their aims is is, is like Bitcoin tourism. And, uh, you know, they want to run a school. They want to teach people. Uh, they have a lot of programmers down there. Um, so it, it is is a viable option. And the reason that this we brought this back up, and we even have here, I have a picture of um, some local farmer's market. People are taking Bitcoin for fruits and vegetables. So, you know, that's interesting, you know, moving into the 20, you know, 2022. Mm -hmm. But the reason we bring this up, because we've talked about Bitcoin before. Uh, I'm sorry, not Bitcoin. We talked about Costa Rica before. Mm -hmm. And another thing that we got to talk about Costa Rica is you go to webforum.org and it says the 10 best destinations for retirement. And the number two on the list is Costa Rica. And the reason that that's important is because we talked about it before. So now Costa Rica is friendly to digital nomads mm -hmm. and um, remote workers. Mm -hmm. It's also friendly to Bitcoiners. Mm -hmm. And now it looks like it's going to be friendly to uh, retirees as well. And it has always been uh, retiree friendly, but they're just uh, reiterating that. And so it, it, it's starting to check off all the boxes where maybe this is a very viable option for people to look into. And we're just trying to bring you the options that, you know, seem, you know, seem worth looking into. Uh, people have always liked to go to Costa Rica. It's a beautiful country, uh, beautiful weather. People are very nice, great food. Um, you know, so now if you can get some arbitrage with the uh, your investments, your uh, remote working and your retirement and pension, um, this seems like a very uh, a good place to look into. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I was going to say, I didn't um, send you the article, but mm -hmm. um, Walmart okay. put out an article saying that when they did their quarterly analysis, mm -hmm. that people were only buying basic groceries. Okay. Think about how many times we've gone into Walmart mm -hmm. where you went for eggs and came back with $150 worth of junk. Yeah. People aren't doing that anymore. And I'm bringing that up because... We're getting to a point when people are just buying the basic groceries at Walmart. That inflation is running so far away from you guys in the United States. It's not funny. Mm -hmm. So you want to understand as we continue to see signals of societal collapse, what are my options? And what right. Simon's basically telling you is that Costa Rica is one of your options. Yeah. Right. Um, like he said, all that Bitcoin where you've been piling away, mm -hmm. you can um, buy your fruits, your vegetables, which are significantly cheaper yes. with your Bitcoin. Um, even if you don't use your Bitcoin for that, if you're like us and you're just like, we're going to hoard this away from now until kingdom come. All right. Um, groceries cost less, real estate's less, mm -hmm. renting's less, gas. Even here, I, I, I remember asking Simon, I said, do you feel like gas went up a lot here in Mexico? And he said... Not a lot, just a couple pesos. Whereas in the U.S., it went up a couple dollars. Couple dollars, yeah. So this is a significant difference. So he's just trying to kind of lay out some blueprints for you guys on areas specifically that can be your Plan B. Shout mm -hmm. out to Plan B. I haven't yeah. seen your podcast in a long time, yeah. but you know Costa Rica can be your Plan B. Um, another thing you bring up all the time is that retiring right now. In yeah. this particular market, uh, yeah, I mean because you can't really time the market, uh, you know. So you retire when you retire, and the market, you know, is 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 at the level that it's at. So um, you want to, no matter when you retire, you want to get the most out of your retirement. And uh, people have been doing that for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's big in Mexico. Uh, it's always been big in Costa Rica, but it's starting to spread across the world. 
we just bring um, different places to you that we have studied or maybe we've been to. Um, we haven't been to Dominical probably in, uh, man, it's probably eight, nine years. Um, but it looks like it might be uh, somewhere we need to go back and check out. Um, Dominical, we thought uh, one thing about Dominical, well, I'll just give you some a breakdown about a couple of things. Um, one thing is if you go to Costa Rica, you're most likely flying to the San Jose airport. San Jose, San Juan, San Jose, San Jose, I'm sorry. About a four hour drive to Dominical. So, you know, you would have to be ready for that. So, as soon as you get out, you'd have to get a, a cab or something. Tell the truth about the journey. Four hour drive way down to the coast. Um, when we did it, it was about 150 bucks. So, I'm sure it costs more than that now. Um, as opposed to when you go to El Salvador, you're going to fly into the. Um, San Salvador Airport, mm -hmm. and it'll be about an hour, hour and a half drive. Mm -hmm. So a little easier to get to. Uh, when you get out there, um, it is it is a jungle. I mean, no, nah, it's a jungle for real. It's a jungle. So it's like a it's like a, like a mountain mm -hmm. that comes all the way down to the beach. So it, it's kind of mm -hmm. uh, interesting um, because you got a jungle that just comes down and touches to the beach, which is you know you get the best of both worlds if 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 you like jungles. Uh, we could tell you about the jungle. We had a house up in the jungle. So you go up the mountain. It was a nice gated community. Well, it was a, a community, a gated community up on the mountain. But um, and we had a nice house out there with a, with a pool house. So a house with a pool house. And we had a pool. Everything was real nice. But it's in the jungle. And, you know, the jungle, man, the jungle brings about different things. So, you know, different types of animals, different types of uh, insects. <laughs> Uh, it's a different level of darkness at night. You know, so people, <laughs> it's SpongeBob dark. Yeah, all your parents boy, watch SpongeBob, yeah. you know that, right? Well, when the sun go down, <laughs> it, the sun is gone. It's dark. So um, yeah, but the jungle was very interesting. It's very healthy. Um, <coughs> unfortunately, and we didn't know this then because our son was a little younger, but we know now uh, the humidity out there uh, <clears throat> gave him problems with his asthma. So we. Uh, we understand that we can't really live in places like that anymore. But he was very young. He's like two or three. And we didn't know that the, the humidity was <clears throat> giving his asthma problems. So, you know, that's just one of the things, you know, part of the process when you move around, you, you kind of learn these things. But you don't have to live up in the mountains. You can live down on the beach. So they have uh, accommodations on the beach, houses on the beach, um, <coughs> condos and stuff down there. So. Um, you know, the Bitcoin jungle, it, 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 it looks like it could be interesting, but it is an actual jungle. It, it's, it's a very interesting place, uh, but the people are very nice. Um, the weather is great. Uh, they do have a very harsh rainy season, though, because it's a jungle. You know, they call it a jungle. I call it a rainforest. It's like jungle slag because it rains so much up there. But um, great place. It's a great place. And um, we're going to try to go and check it out. Uh, you know, I don't like to travel as much as I used to. So that's a lot, you know, the four hour drive out there to the coast. But uh, it, I think it'd be worth looking into. Uh, what, mm -hmm. do you, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I would be curious to see how much they built it up. Mm -hmm. um, they are going U.S. investors, mm -hmm. so they are building it up. There's no doubt about that. Um, there was so much stuff he left out of that, y'all. Oh, yeah, <laughs> He man, didn't tell y'all we had indoor-outdoor living. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, you know. He didn't tell the whole story. But that's okay, right? We It was it was an experience. Yeah, indoor-outdoor living is, if, you, if, if you're okay with that. It's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, you know, because they had a lot of spiders. Um, I'm not crazy about spiders, but they had spiders like the size of your hands, right? Start telling the truth. Yeah, like, <laughs> You come out, they're like on the top of the wall. You're like, man, what am I going to do about that? Um, they had, what else? They had the big black snakes. Mm -hmm. um, they had, he wasn't scared of the snakes. He was not crazy no, I'm about not, the spiders. I don't care. I mean, snakes don't bother me. Okay. Um, you know, but you had beautiful things. You had like toucans everywhere. Yes. We just had toucans in the backyard sitting on the tree. Um, you had, we had like a little sloth mm -hmm. who, just, who just hung on the tree every day to see the sloth. Um, beautiful butterflies. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Hummingbirds, yeah, they had all, you know, so there's a lot of beautiful things in nature going on out there. They had, a, when you could, we could see from our balcony, they had this waterfall. It's a beautiful waterfall. It was a beautiful waterfall over there, so you can go over to the waterfall. Now tell them about the mosquitoes. Yeah, the mosquitoes would beat you down, man. The mosquitoes <laughs> would beat you down. God. Yeah, you try to, we, we get these candles, these little things you would burn. It, it just didn't work. Oh, the little circle yeah. thing that looked like a, it looked like a, 
the I to a stove. Yeah, it didn't work. It didn't work. They didn't work. But it was great, but it didn't work. But um, yeah, you know, it was a great place, and <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to live in Bitcoin jungle, right? Just like if you go out to the Bitcoin beach, um, it's the same kind of setup. It's a beach kind of lifestyle, um, <clears throat> and we talk about that because you know we 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 do a lot of ripping and running. Um, you know, business stuff, working, kids, homeschooling. So, like, this beach lifestyle is a real laid-back lifestyle. And it wasn't really for us because of all the things that we have to do. But you could be somebody that's like a digital nomad or a remote worker. Come out, sit on the beach, pop open your laptop, and you're working on the beach every day. You know, no worries. So it just depends on your lifestyle. You could still stay in the city. Um, and then, you know, visit Bitcoin Beach. Like, you know, the nice areas up there would be uh, Escazu and Santa Ana, right? Santa Ana. Santa Ana. So, like, even when we went to El Salvador, we stayed in the city. And then we just went out to Bitcoin Beach mm -hmm. and, you know, just enjoyed it. We popped open the laptop. <laughs> we went out there a couple of times and, you know, we had the laptop out and the iPad. We were doing our work, you know, mm -hmm. grabbing a, a drink or two mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just enjoying life. So these are options that we like to bring to you, especially with the arbitrage. Um, Costa Rica giving you these incentives mm -hmm. to be a resident and stuff like that. And um, also for the retirees and the uh, Bitcoiners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, these countries are wooing. U.S. citizens who, you know, your paycheck may not be a lot to you there, but it's a lot to these countries. So they are especially um, wooing retirees, the digital nomads, and the work from homers mm -hmm. um, that are allowed to live anywhere. Because they do have work from homers who they tell you you have to stay here. Yeah, yeah. But um, <clears throat> in addition to that, it's just to me in these trying times when the bills are high, the money seems low, the money seems short, mm -hmm. it's just good to have options. It is. And that's what we try to bring you. We try to bring you some different options um, of places to go. And you don't have to move there, but just places you can look into. Um, you know, you do some investments there. Maybe you want to corporate. Um, you know, it, it's all these things that you could take advantage of mm -hmm. globally mm -hmm. right where like we say this is really about building up your life portfolio right we said it before we'll say it again if you went and invested your money your financial advisor would say hey don't put all your money in this one investment mm -hmm. diversify mm -hmm. so when in doubt zoom out if you had a life portfolio diversify mm -hmm. don't put everything under one jurisdiction because if anything happens everything that you have built up is in jeopardy. Where if you had something over here or you had something here, you know, something out there, then you have, um, you know, a little hedge, a little protection against some of the chaos and things that go on in your um, home country. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm not just going to get that. Oh, I was going to say, and um, you're going to keep hearing me making these points. You know, the U.S. is on the verge of societal collapse. Mm -hmm. Right. So they are crumbling and falling apart. Mm -hmm. Whereas these smaller countries say what you want about them. They're building up. They're in a different phase of their life. Mm -hmm. Like you had mentioned um, the Tony Robbins thing. The oh, seasons. the phase. Oh, man, I could pull that up. real. But quick. Costa Rica, let's say, is in its spring. It's building up. Right. OK. Right. Mm -hmm. El Salvador is trying to build up where America is. Winter is coming. Uh -oh. Wow, where show that come from? Uh oh, that's from Game of Thrones. Uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> right, winter is coming. No, I'm serious though, right? And you need to see the signs of the societal collapse and ask yourself if Rome is burning, then what is being birthed? What is coming into its mm -hmm. fullness? Right. And maybe be on that end <clears throat> of the spectrum instead of burning with Rome. I mean, you know, I'm just throwing that out there, but. Like I said, the U.S. is on the verge of huge societal collapse. The things are running away. Mm -hmm. um, infrastructure. When I say infrastructure, I'm not just talking about corporate America. We're talking about, um, I've been noticing a lot of vacancies in schools. Right? Y'all told the teachers, if you don't like your job, quit. They did. Mm -hmm. Now there's hundreds of vacancies in every city for teachers. 
um, Cincinnati Fire put out this thing the other day that in the next 36 months, 300 firefighters are going to be retiring or are eligible for retirement. They don't hire 300 people a year. They hire yeah. about 20. So when you call 911 because your house is on fire, they don't have the manpower to handle it. And that's just not Cincinnati. That is fire departments all over the U.S. Yeah, and, it's, that's, uh, and that's important because <clears throat> what she's talking about is structural. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about people who do the jobs that, um, that what they say, undergird society, right? Mm -hmm. Fire, you could talk about um police sanitation. or sanitation, uh, things like uh, utilities, electricity, um, all this stuff is going to be affected because if you don't have the workers to do them, um, the manpower is down. It, now, like you said, that affects the, uh, the society. society yeah. They don't have pilots, so you can't travel like you want to. Mm -hmm. The U.S. is going to get to a point where you guys are going to want to do all these great things we've been talking about forever can't because there's no pilot or ground crew yeah. to take you there you can't drive there um so just kind of keep all of these things in mind he talks about a lot zooming out so i zoomed you guys all the way out mm -hmm. the u.s is on the verge of societal collapse rome is burning yes yeah, the western you know western world uh, canada who else uk uk yeah uh, all those first world countries yeah but, those first world western countries while Costa Rica may not be categorized as an emerging market, I'm just giving you an idea on these places where they are building up, they're not collapsing. Mm -hmm. You want to really take a hard look at those places and consider what will the U.S. look like 10 years from now. And remember, it's a strategic move. It's not, it's not about running or fleeing. It's strategic. Right. You know, you move your chess piece to the, uh, to the appropriate square, um, that gives you the best benefit um, because, you know, she's talking about burning. Interesting thing here. Um, people here, like when you have your, uh, your grass, you know, you get your grass cut. But as the season ends, a lot of people here burn their grass. Mm -hmm. So to burn the grass, to burn it down, you know, to black. And then what happens is you'll notice a couple weeks later, you're coming back with that really green mm -hmm. sprout yeah. coming back out. So it's something where it's, you have to burn it. You know, to cleanse it, mm -hmm. and then it can come back anew and uh, be better than it was. But in burning the grass, you burnt the entire ecosystem. The ants, the earthworms, yep. like things got destroyed along the way. Yep. I'm glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. I want to bring this part up. Sounds beautiful mm -hmm. until I tell you what happens to all of the things that live in the grass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So the idea is while Rome will rebuild itself again at one point, America has always shown its testicular fortitude it's up to you on if you want to be part of the ecosystem that burns with it right if you can stomach that if you can stomach your kids going through that whatever the situation is just understand that you have options right for some people if they live in a neighborhood and they notice the neighborhood going to crap they would move mm -hmm. other people would be like we're gonna take our neighborhood back so it just yeah. depends on what your personality is mm -hmm. and it depends on what you want out of life so i mean i just wanted to bring that up because you know some people are going to stay and try to rebuild with the u.s mm -hmm. other people want to know what their options are yeah i don't blame you if you want to stay mm -hmm. and, and uh, build back up I, that's that's admirable i understand mm -hmm. that um we're just saying if the people who want to um, try to use arbitrage mm -hmm. to do things and build their wealth up these are some of the moves that you can make so i mean we're not saying everybody should leave it's just the people who think that there's an option that they can go out there and do something better and build up because you can always go back. It's, it's never a problem to go back. I mean, we've been gone for quite a while, but we can just go back and that'd be that. And maybe one day we will go back, but um, we just like to bring these kind of things to you. Um, Costa Rica is a place I like a lot. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't meet all the criteria. Some of the things, you know, I'm not crazy about uh, smaller countries, but because uh, I like to be able to move around. Like Mexico is a bigger country, I like to be able to move around. Costa Rica is about the size of West Virginia, so um, you know that gives you a kind of and it's it's so on top of I mean I'm, on top of I'm sorry north of Costa Rica would be Nicaragua and uh, south of Costa Rica would be Panama. 
So those would be the two countries, you know, that you are enclosed by. So these are places that you would go, that, you know, if you could, because sometimes you have to make a visa run or something like that. You have to pick your country that you're going to go to. Um, but it is a very viable country, and people have been using it for many years, especially retirees. I mean, oh, forever, as mm-hmm. long as I can remember. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah, I like Costa Rica. I definitely like Costa Rica. Um I like the uh, incentives they're giving, especially for the digital nomads, the mm-hmm. people. Um, I like the opportunities they're giving for Bitcoin investors. What do you mm-hmm. think? Yeah, I mean, they're really trying to woo people. So their incentives are a lot more attractive mm-hmm. than, unfortunately, I sent you this article today. I think you saw it. Mm. It's, the incentives are a lot better than the incentives the U.S. are trying to use to woo work from homers and digital no matters to yeah. um, their states. So, for instance, <clears throat> I saw one in West Virginia. Oh, They're giving you just credits. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> They're giving you credits, mortgage credits. Um, not really sure <laughs> what that means, <laughs> but maybe it's, it's points or something towards getting a mortgage there, uh, money down. I don't know. But it's not enough. It's we're talking like five thousand dollars. Okay. And when you're buying a home that's two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars, five thousand dollars doesn't help me at all. So I'm just showing you that these. <clears throat> again, I'm not talking about the categorization as emerging markets. I'm just talking about them as a building up country. Their incentives are a lot better than the incentives that your home is offering you to move there. Mm-hmm. And then two, they're crypto friendly, whereas. West Virginia is not crypto friendly, right? They just want you to buy a house there. So it's just kind of seeing if this was a a job, right? The corporation you work for isn't really offering you anything to stay, but the wooing corporation is offering you lots of things you're into in order to help build up their organization. So you just kind of want to see it like that. Um, Again, it's it's strategy. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Costa Rica has great weather outside of the rainy season. When it rains, it can't, that torrential downpour doesn't last long. Right? It's going to pour for what? 20, 30 minutes? Yeah, but get, remember it used to get rough at night, though. Yeah, nighttime night time you want to be in the house. Yeah, middle of the night. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah you During rainy night. season, you don't want to be out partying and stuff like nah, that. Nah, you need to get home. But you have six months of non rainy season where you can get all of that in. Mm-hmm. Right. If you're a surfer, whatever it is that you like to do, um, it's just beautiful weather mostly all year round. Yeah, I, and I want to say an interesting thing. And this is just something <clears throat> I had noticed. You know, I don't know if it's important to anybody else. So where we lived at in Costa Rica was Dominical, right? This uh, Bitcoin Beach. This is where we lived, and it's on the Pacific coast. But if you if you go look now, if you go look at a map, Costa Rica is east of Miami. If you look on the map, right, mm-hmm. and you just see where Dominical is, it's east of Miami. Mm-hmm. But we were on uh, Pacific Standard Time, right? <laughs> Not the mess they mind it. Yeah, because <laughs> because we're in the Pacific Ocean, mm-hmm. and and what did that mean? That means it gets dark at like four thirty in the afternoon, four thirty five o'clock in the afternoon. It's getting dark, and but that means the sun was coming up. What? It'd be like four thirty five mm-hmm. in the morning. It would feel like it was like 7, 7.30. It's 4.30. And I said, why are we on Eastern Standard Time? We're not. We should be on Eastern Standard Time. We're on Pacific Standard Time because we're on the Pacific Coast on the Pacific Ocean. But it threw the time off all the time. And, then, you know, that was, that, that was crazy to me because the sun would come up at like 4.30 in the morning. And then it would go down 4.35 at night. And. And, and it started raining at five, and it's like you better be home, mm-hmm. get home, because it's gonna start. It starts raining really hard. Psychologically, it does mess your mind up. It does, yeah, <laughs> it, it does. It I throws you off. Much. It throws you off, though. But you know, Costa Rica's a great place. Uh, I like Panama. You know, that that's the southern country, Nicaragua. You know, a great place if you can uh, protect yourself. <laughs> and Nicaragua's a great place, but. Um, yeah, that whole region is uh, it, it's coming up. They have a Bitcoin city in Guatemala mm-hmm. uh, coming up. We were going to talk about. I, I just you know the articles I get were 
they were all in Spanish, so I was trying to decipher them and decode them, but it was taking too long. So. <laughs> but yeah, Guatemala, you know, that's another place we're going we're gonna to try to check out. This whole uh, Central America uh, type of thing, and then also down to South America. So um, what else would you say? No, that's all I would say is that these are markets that are in their um, season. I do want you to do this with them. Oh, the season. They're in their season of spring where they're building up, stuff's growing. And, you know, first world countries are actually out, falling out of fall and into winter. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, it kind of, what she's saying, kind of ties back into the uh, fourth turning where you had the turnings, the seculums, um, you know, which are about 20, 25 years each. And then you had the archetypes of the people within the turnings and the seculums. Um, so that was interesting, but she wants me to talk about the, so these are the people though, the seasons of the people. So you want me to talk about the seasons of the people? Yeah. Cause I mean, it can be an analogy to the condition of the countries. You know what I mean? Okay. So well, the first season and what they, you know, the first season is spring all the time, right? Mm-hmm. So spring as they give it to the age of the people is zero to 20 years old. And they call it as uh, childhood learn protection. And a lot of the things that you're going to see in the spring would be creation, um, grow, absorb, learn, protection. So that's your spring. So that's like the first season um, of a person, right, mm-hmm. in their age group. You wouldn't say anything about the spring. Mm-hmm, no. Young springers. We got a young springer upstairs. <laughs> it's time, uh, never mind. Um, summer. So we got summer. It's a, they say they classify summer 21 to 41. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's young adulthood. Test and discover. So you want to test what is learned. Decide what you will value. Time for relationships, kids, and family. That's the summer. So that's the summertime, right? 21 to 41, where you really just kind of build up your... Uh, your career, your family, and just, you know, uh, go out there and see what you can do. You know what I mean? No, I'm not happy to do all of them. Though. Okay. So now you got the fall, right? The fall. So fall is my favorite season. I mean, I love when the, the leaves turn, you know, change colors. And, you know, I'll be honest, I'm a football fan. So, you know, football's <laughs> coming back in. It's the fall. We're ready. The, um, the temperature changes, you know, um, so I love that. So we're here with they have fall, 42 to 62, midlife, power, and great harvest, mm-hmm. right? So you want to be reaping. You want to be reaping the rewards of all the hard work that you did in the summer, mm-hmm. right? This is a time where people come into their, they start coming into their, uh, their wealth and stuff like that. Um, so time of power, impact, taking charge. And unwinding some relationships and career. So that's important. Let's talk about the fall. Because because the fall is really important. Because a lot of people are coming into the fall. Um, and let's talk. Do you want to talk about anything about the fall? Well, the fall is <clears throat> when you really do walk into your greatness. Yep. Um, you have wisdom. You, you know, when you're in your spring, you're only 20. You don't know nothing. You think you do. You think you know a lot. You don't know nothing. But um, the fall is actually the full maturation mm-hmm. of a person or whatever it is that you are um, describing. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, America, if I'm using this as the analogy, has had its fall, meaning it came into its maturation. Make America great again. It was flooded with money. It had all of the gold. It had all of the world's gold. Mm-hmm. Um they invited immigrant after immigrant after immigrant, and it didn't really put any um, pressure on society. Right. Right. They all became productive citizens. They were able to make money off of a society that wasn't theirs. Whereas other countries can't do that. Right. They'll tell you outright, like, no, <laughs> we don't want everybody else over here. We can't take care of the people who are here. Right. America has gone through its fall. So when you go through winter, Oh, so winter is the end. You know, winter is coming. But I think winter is here. So let's talk about winter. So as a as a group of people, winter will be 63 to 83. So we're using the um, life expectancy of 83 years old. Um, so 63 through 83. So this is elderhood, mm-hmm. leadership, mm-hmm. mentoring, 
slowing down, mm -hmm. definitely want to slow it down, laying foundation, this is important, laying foundation for the next spring and clearing next spring. So, and you're in your winter, you should be, like she said, you should be, uh, have wisdom, leadership, and you will lay this down. You say you have the youngins coming up mm -hmm. and we are building for the next mm -hmm. spring. We're giving you information, um, knowledge, wisdom, so that you can start this cycle over again. And yet in the winter, they're saying 63 to 83, however long you're going to live, 63, you can mm -hmm. be however far it goes out to, you know, 93, 103. But that is the last cycle. So that's the seasons in a person's life as postulated, as we talked about uh, Neil, um, it was uh, Strauss and Howe who did the... Uh, sure fourth turning but this is generations mm -hmm. this comes from their book before the fourth turning called generations and they're talking about the four seasons of a person's life so you could be in any season within any turning and still you th these are the things that you need to do and this is what we want you know especially in that winter season you want that elderhood you want that uh mentorship what do you call them sages mm -hmm. yeah you want all that going on in that winter season um most of the people will be, um, most of your people, especially in the United States, unfortunately, because the uh, collapse of the, uh, well, no, we're below replacement. Mm -hmm. Most of your people were going to be in fall and winter. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to understand that you have that midlife power, great harvest is where uh, people are coming into their power, like mm -hmm. you say, their wisdom their wealth, mm -hmm. and then you have that winter season where you have people who are going to be elderhood and uh, giving out mm -hmm. good game that we like to see. Now, America has been the free leader of the world for a good little minute. Good. But you can now see the other powers mm -hmm. coming into power that are surpassing America's leadership. We can see it. Mm -hmm. right? We want to get to a point where we can read the the universe again right we've come so far away from that and what happens is they're telling you all the time these things are going on mm -hmm. and then when the actual collapse happens everybody's shocked right because collapse doesn't happen in a day it takes decades yeah yeah right it doesn't happen in a day entropy doesn't happen immediately it happens over time and then people are like oh what happened? Because we weren't paying attention, right? right? So we're giving you the signs of the societal collapse. Mm -hmm. We're giving you the options, the plan. Um, a lot of the stuff that we talk about, he has saw coming since like 2012. After that last crash, he was all over it. He was like, okay, I'm starting to see signs that in several years from now, we're going to have a big, big problem. He did think that um, when Bitcoin kind of came up, he was like, all right, maybe this will account for everything and it might get everything back on track, but let's see. But he had that feeling like, mm, I don't want to be here when this falls apart. Um, we did leave in the, the last, last presidential campaign. We wasn't well, sure how that was going to go there. <laughs> he was like, this ain't good. <laughs> but he saw some of the writing on the wall and was like, I just want to change my position and just see how that goes. Yeah, and you know, and there's a, a famous saying that they use. It's called, uh, if you guys are familiar with uh, Hemingway, it's the law of motion. And they add, you know, they use this about uh, economics. And they say, well, how does the collapse go? The collapse go, it goes, how does the collapse go? It goes gradually and then suddenly, mm -hmm. right? And that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's kind of gradually going and then suddenly it'll just, you'll see that, that move. So, um, and we knew those stimuluses weren't going to be free. We knew that oh, when we got those stimuluses, we put them away in our investments and stuff because we knew what the fallout would be from all of that helicopter money. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> what we're wanting to share with you is the writings on the wall, the news is telling you every day this is falling apart, this is falling apart, this is falling apart. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough manpower for this, mm -hmm. sanitation's collapsing all of these different areas of the infrastructure of the society that is convenient to you will no longer be convenient. It's yeah. going to require 
you now to take on some of the responsibility of things that mm. you may not know how to do. Yeah. Didn't know you were going to have to do. Yeah. But doesn't mean it has to be your condition. There are other places that are in their spring. They're building up. They want families to come. Mm -hmm. They want you to, um, you know, bring your business. You can start a business here. They are going to woo you with all of the benefits of almost better than what their citizens can actually get. Right? Their citizens don't even have access to the stuff that they're going to offer you. And that's what we talk about. <laughs> with the United States. Reverse engineering because people come to the United States and get access to stuff that U.S. citizens don't really have access to. And uh, people get upset about it and we say, reverse engineer that thing and go back to other countries and you get access to things that their um, native people don't have access to. Mm -hmm. And it's not about um, you know, taking away from them or anything like that. It's that if they're offering incentives for you to come over, for example, like uh, we talk about Chile. You come over and start a business, you get these incentives to get money, right? As a business owner, as, as long as you employ the citizens of Chile. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can, we can name uh, country after country where you can go get incentives mm -hmm. for going over there and, you know, starting businesses and things like that because, they come to your country mm -hmm. and they get incentives and, and set asides and things like that. So go to their countries and get incentives and set asides. Mm -hmm. Two, you're yeah. also infusing back into their country, mm -hmm. right? So it's that money is turning around in that economy. Mm -hmm. um, always make sure you find a way to get those incentives back to a back, uh, black business. Adopt one, do whatever you need to do. Yeah. Um, we have the digital age era. You could even send black business money and if they can't get their product to you, tell them, Hey, I want to support you. Go ahead and raffle this away, whatever, whatever. I just want to support this black business. So we do, um, also making a very point to adopt black businesses mm -hmm. and do things to support them and so on and so forth. So please ensure that you take that responsibility on as well. But for the most part, when you live in these countries, when you're, an extended stay mode at these countries, mm -hmm. you are infusing back into their economy. So you're not taking from them. Right. And so, I mean, but that is the, well, what I'm trying to say is that that's the thing to is try to reverse engineer it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Reverse engineer it. Um, there's opportunities <laughs> out here all over the world. Um, for you, we try to bring the ones that we, we see and we read about. Some of them we've actually, uh, I mean, we've actually been there and done that, so we, you know, we can tell you about how it works. <clears throat> but uh, you know, I don't know. It's just, it, I mean, it's a science experiment as we see it. Uh, you want to go out here and you want to try different things and see what works for you. Mm -hmm. What works for you? What works for you and your family? Mm -hmm. And uh, remember, you know, it's about taking care of your family, being uh, constructive, mm -hmm. uh, productive. Uh, we always want to build as a community, but you still have the obligations to the people um, under your household, under your roof, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you want to do what's best for them in the idea of understanding what that next generation needs, I think, more so than whatever it is you need, mm -hmm. right? Because you're going to get to a certain season of your life where it's not about you anymore. Right. And we talked about that, too, you know, and people, I got a little pushback on that, but that's what the seasons are about. I told you, you know, as people get to a certain age, it's like the way that the world's set up, you don't matter anymore. And you might think because you're 45, like, no, I still matter. I said, well, the seasons are going to tell you the way that they're moving politically and just the way that it moves through the turnings and the seculums and all that. You, you get to a point where... Um, even though you don't think you're that old, it doesn't matter because they're coming back looking for the younger season, right? They're looking for the spring and they're looking for summer and you're in fall and you still think that you matter like spring because they, uh, they're looking, they're, they're looking at spring as more important, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, it, it, it's not something that you should take personally. Mm -hmm. Nobody's saying you're old and you don't matter in, in real life. We're just saying, but we're just saying that. <laughs> The way that the world works, they're looking for the younger people because the younger people are going to move the world forward. 
But that's about it. Um, take a look at Costa Rica. I mean, we're not going to go deep into it, but I'm also going to mention that um, Colombia has just added a digital nomad where if you work from home and you make three times whatever their um, minimum wages, uh -oh. you can be there for up to two years. Oh, right? Sure. There's really not a whole show to do about that. Let's pull so it I'm up. I'm just going to mention it. Let's pull it up. Um, oh, that was the only. They have a few other editions, but that's the only one worth mentioning. Okay. The other stuff requires a crap ton of paperwork that mm. we're not going to go into on this show. We've already kept them for 45 minutes. But, you know, Columbia is something you may want to look at if you work from home. Not to say you can retire there, but their work from home incentive giving you the two-year visa to me is worth looking into because mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about anything for 24 months. 24 yeah. months. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm sure you can re-up and do what you need to do, but um, we're just mentioning that there are options. Yeah. Definitely options, you know, and it's all, you know, we, we the channel is mostly about Bitcoin, so we're always going to talk about Bitcoin, so we want to give you Bitcoin-friendly <laughs> options. Um, always. Uh, but we also want to give you arbitrage is just for your uh, fiat currency and however it is that you want to invest it and move it around. Right. So because um, less money on your lifestyle is more money invested. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that was a good conversation. You know, you tell me. Right. You tell me. Okay. Hope y'all like it. Hope y'all yeah. love it. I ain't feeling good. <laughs> you can't feel good. Yeah. Um, are we going to do a quick trip? Oh yeah, I always I bring out. So we got to do some uh, other shows. We're still gonna do um, Bitcoin and Zero. So we're working on that. We're gonna do um, Unified Field Theory, Quantum Field Theory. Zoe wants to but do we're gonna bring that. Zoe back for that. You know, shout out to our good brother Zoe. He's gonna come back for that. Mm -hmm. um, we need to do if we need to do. You guys, let me know. Do we need to do Gini coefficient? We talked about it, you know, uh, quickly in a, a previous show, but we can talk about Gini coefficient and how it affects uh, the way that you can pick where you want to live, you know, as far as uh, figure out, you know, how dangerous or possibly dangerous a place that you want to live is. Mm -hmm. So we can do Gini coefficient. Uh, what else do we have to do? I think those were the three shows. We still, I was a sh a shout out to my good brother, the chief. We still need to do, um, uh, what is it called? I Trust Capital. I Trust Capital. So we're still coming with that. We got a lot of shows coming. You guys let us know because, um, you know, we're here to just bring the stuff that you guys would like to hear about. Um, if you have anything else, let us know in the comments mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, the emails and stuff like that. Um, that's it. I don't know. Nope, that's it. That's it. All right. See you.